Today, I want to return to the topic of large numbers, specifically my favorite large number, 52 factorial. When I originally discussed this number, three repeating comments kept popping up. First, roughly 10% of comments joked about the idea of 53 factorial. So congrats on the originality. Secondly, many didn't like that I said it was equal to the concept of infinity. So I want to return to the idea of humanly infinite, or infinite as far as humans are concerned. But the most interesting idea was, well of course the odds of your deck of cards having existed is zero, but surely two decks have had the same order at least once in all of history. And this was interesting because it certainly seems possible. The birthday paradox or problem explains the unintuitive reality that if you have 23 people in a room, there is a 50% chance that two people in that room share a birthday. The reason this number is so low is because we're not simply finding out if one person shares a birthday with anyone else, but if anyone shares a birthday with anyone else. If you know anything about probabilities and statistics, you likely know about independent events, like flipping a coin. If I ask you what's the probability of flipping three heads in a row, then that is simply one half to the power of three. But if I ask you if you flip a coin three times, what's the probability you get heads twice in a row? Well, that is no longer a singular independent event. You could get two heads in a row in three different ways. Therefore, to calculate the probability of this event, you can either multiply the probability of one of these events times the number of ways it's possible, or you can divide the number of ways it can occur by the total number of possibilities. This logic applies to the birthday problem. Pretend there was a person in a room. Another person enters. There are now 365 squared possible birthday combinations, of which 365 share a birthday. When a third person enters the room, now there are 365 cubed combinations. I'm using 50 dots for the side lengths now because 365 cubed is 48 million dots, but the pattern is the same. Now there are about 399,000 combinations that share a birthday. We divide, we get 8.2 tenths of a percent. We could continue this with the fourth person, but it's very tedious. The easier method is to calculate the probability that everyone doesn't share a birthday. I won't explain this method as it has been done before and I wouldn't be able to add anything new to the discussion. I recommend this video if you're curious. But if we take this route, we can use a handy dandy equation to simply plug in values. If we were to plot the probability of two people sharing a birthday given the number of people, we would find that at 23 people, that probability crosses the 50% threshold. This occurs because the more people you add, the more pairs or opportunities you create for two birthdays to be shared. Therefore, we get a match sooner than we'd expect. What about our playing card example? For playing cards, this same logic applies, except instead of 365 birthdays, we have 52 factorial unique card combinations. We can reuse this equation, except this factorial really just messes everything up. Imagine 52 factorial factorial being a part of the calculation. This is wild. Thankfully, we can just rewrite these equations as so. Now we can do some fast calculations. First, what if we were to flip a coin? Or how many decks of cards do we need to shuffle until there is a 50% chance two decks were the same? Well, that number is roughly 10 to the 34th power. That is an absolutely insane number. We have certainly not reached that number of shuffles and we will never ever come even remotely close. So I can confidently sit here and tell you, of all the properly shuffled decks of cards throughout human history, there is a significantly less than 50% chance two of them have been the same. But can we estimate what is the current probability that two decks of cards were properly shuffled into the exact same order? I'm gonna play it safe and make a wildly conservative estimate. A very rough internet search says modern poker cards were created in 1480. Let's say January 1st, 1480, the French distributed billions of decks of cards around the world and every day since, a billion decks are properly shuffled. This is of course a wild overestimation, but when we are dealing with the magnitude of 52 factorial, it doesn't make a difference. That means today, as of writing this script, there have been 198 trillion deck shuffles. 
We can then plug that into our birthday problem solver to see that equates to a probability of 2.4 times 10 to the minus 40 or one in four times 10 to the 39. Wow. Honestly, I thought these odds would have been like one in a thousand or one in a million, but this is, what does this number even mean? Well, I went to the atomic scale. I figured out what volume consists of four times 10 to the 39th water molecules. Turns out this is a volume of 122 cubic kilometers. This is slightly more than La Gobiedma in Argentina. The odds of two people picking a single water molecule out of this lake and those two water molecules being the same are about the same likelihood that two decks of properly shuffled cards have been the same, which as far as I'm concerned is zero. It's not happening. Now, let's return to my claim that it is not just freakingly insanely big, but humanly infinite. By that, I mean there is no non-abstract way to fit 52 factorial into a human or humanities world. But there is one way I wanted to explore. Electricity. At first, I wanted to approach this digitally. I was thinking maybe computations performed by humanity. CPUs now run at gigahertz or billions of times per second. Perhaps that might get close. But no. Before even doing the math, I realized I wasn't being ambitious enough. Starting at a billion is too low. But what about the number of electrons we've used as humanity? Does this come close to 52 factorial? I'm writing this part of the script before I do the calculation because I don't want to spoil my excitement, but I feel I have drastically underestimated 52 factorial again. If we can crack 40 as an exponent, I will be satisfied. I worry that we will fall shockingly short. To tackle this, I need to find global electricity production for the last 100 years or so. Most data sets only go back to the 80s. However, I found this graph plotting electricity production from 1900 through 2017. I then fit a curve and mesh to the graph in Blender to calculate the area under the curve. I then added this to the electricity produced through 2022 from another source. This came out to 829 petawatt hours. That's great and all, but the total electrical output doesn't tell me much about the number of electrons. I need to know the voltage of this electricity, as higher voltage requires fewer electrons to produce the same amount of energy. I found this map of voltage by country, and since we are dealing with such large numbers, I don't need to be super accurate here, so I'll just average between these two with a slight weight to the blue. With this information, I can make a rough calculation of the number of electrons we have used since 1900. First, we need to convert our petawatt hours to joules, which is dishearteningly low. Now that we know how much energy we need to produce, we need to know what combination of charge and voltage will create that energy. Voltage is electrical pressure, or the ferocity at which a charged object wants to move. If we picture an electron on a ledge falling through a wheel, a higher voltage means the electron will fall with greater kinetic energy, spinning the wheel more than an electron who falls slower at lower voltages. It should be clear why we need less electrons to produce the same amount of energy if the voltage is high. Well, I've decided our voltage will be 190 volts. The energy we can extract from our voltage field is simply the charge of the particle in coulombs times the voltage. But we don't know the charge, so we'll have to solve for that. Doing so gives us a charge of 15 million trillion coulombs. Now we simply have to divide this value by the charge of an electron to see how many electrons it takes to produce this charge. Shit. 9.8 times 10 to the 37th electrons. So close to that 40 exponent. Well, I guess not really. It's three orders of magnitude off, but you know, three numbers feels close to me. Also, I want to point out this number is still less than the previous number. So you're more likely matching up two random electrons from a set of all electrons humanity has ever used than two decks of cards having ever shared the same order in human history. 52 factorial is humanly infinite. There's nothing we could do to produce 52 factorial as a real concept in the world over a human's lifespan. But we've come so far. Can it be done? Let's say a person lives 100 years. 
Moving backwards, how much energy needs to be distributed by humanity over those 100 years to produce 52 factorial electrons? That many electrons equals a charge of 1.3 times 10 to the 49th coulombs. At 190 volts, this would equal 2.45 times 10 to the 51st joules. 100 years is 3.15 billion seconds. If we divide our total energy by that many seconds, then humanity would need to output 7.76 times 10 to the 41 joules every second, which is about 100,000 times more energy than the entire Milky Way produces. So no, 52 factorial will forever be out of reach for humanity.